Hi everybody, Mark Michaels here with Cutting Horse Central and we've got a special treat today. We've got Mr. Jeremy Barwick. He's kind of an elusive character. He's hard to get on camera sometimes. He doesn't like doing interviews, but we've, uh, we've cornered him down today at the office at Brazos Valley Staying Station. Jeremy, welcome. Well, hi Mark. It's good to be here. Yeah, well, uh, so tell us uh, what's, what's going on at uh, Brazos Valley. How's this, this COVID-19 and the stay at home deal? How's that affecting you guys out there? You know, really, it's it hadn't been that bad for us because during breeding season, we work seven days a week anyway, so we don't really go anywhere anyway. But it, it certainly will be nice when things start opening back up. But, you know, as far as breedings, it really hasn't slowed down much. Um, I kind of thought it would a little bit, not with just that, but the oil prices too. But it, it's been pretty steady and, and still a lot of new contracts coming in. Do you are you seeing maybe some show horses getting bred now because they're they're on hold that that maybe normally might not have been getting bred during this time? Yeah, the the last few weeks we have we've had a we've had quite a few show mares come in that we're breeding on now that that they didn't plan on breeding, but and then a couple that they were just going to do one embryo out of that we ended up doing two out of just because they couldn't go to any show, so they were just sitting around, so we went ahead and did more. Yeah. Have you uh, have you had to take any special precautions? Obviously, there's a lot less flights now. So with seamen shipping all over the country, how's how's that been working? You know, luckily, we haven't had a whole lot of trouble with the flights, um, you know, because we'll have 10 or 12 flights a day. And, and we've, we've had two or three flights is really all we've had that we've had any trouble with. We've, have, we've had some trouble with FedEx here lately, but that was all weather related. Right. Right. So, uh, so overall, numbers are looking up, you think? Yeah, you know, I, I thought last year we had a great year with the horses we had. They all bred a lot of mares. And, and this year, I thought it, sl it started out maybe a little slower, but it seems like here the last 30 days, it's really, really stepped up and, and been really good. Maybe they're spending those entry fees on breeding fees now. Yeah, yeah, they're not, they're not having to spend entry fees, so they got a little extra money to breed their mares. So tell us, uh, any, uh, any special projects you've had going on at the ranch during this time? You know, we've just got a lot of little odds and ends stuff done that we've been putting off for a while that we needed to do that we got tons of time to do it now. So we've actually got caught up on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, I know, I know you've been busy out there. You probably haven't had as much time to watch some of these, uh, this old footage we've been playing, um, you know, on, on CHC live scoring. So tell us a little bit about uh, how that all came about. I mean, you, you basically handed me these, these five, five hard drives and, and we've got most of the shows from 2004 to 2014. Um, that, that you had digitally converted from Backfence Video from the VHS. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we, and we do. We keep it on in the office when it's playing, so we do keep up with a lot. It's, it's pretty interesting to watch those old horses. So back when, and we actually have, I think it's back to 1977 or 78. We just haven't got them all digitized yet. Oh, wow. Um, we have everything that Backfence Videos did. We have all their videos. So back when Chuck Smith was the executive director for us there at NCHA. I had actually talked to Lewis Noto a couple of times about buying them because I get, I, I like the history and, and the old horses. And I just, after NCHA decided to do their own video deal and let Lewis go, I didn't want those videos just to be destroyed somewhere and lose all that history because no one had it. You know, unless you had a video of a certain horse, you didn't have the whole show. So, and actually Bo and I, we talk a lot about video. We both like all those old videos and stuff and that so we had kind of visited about it. And so I contacted Lewis and Chuck had actually already talked to Lewis about trying to get them bought for NCHA and they never could make a deal. So, <clears throat> and Lewis really wanted NCHA to have them. So I just, I called Lewis and made a deal with him that, hey, I'll buy them and I'll give them to NCHA as long as they, they build a, online library eventually that'll be done and that way everyone will have access to go see all of them yeah we've had a tremendous response with it and a lot of people requesting actually your buddy milt bradford just texted me as, as we were getting on here asking if i had 2002 amateur finals because he won that one so he wants to see that one <laughs> Uh, so, well, let me ask Jeremy. I'm about to get on a Zoom interview with him. Um, so, so, so you, you, I mean, they are converting everything as far back as 1977. It's either 77 or 78, back when Backfence Video started. But we wow. bought everything they have, and all of that is supposed. That's the first set we have. It's what you have that's already converted, 
And last I heard a couple of weeks ago, they were in the process of getting the rest of them converted. Wow, that's that's gonna be fun to see some of that footage. Yeah, then we'll have we'll have everything then. Yeah, yeah. What have uh, what have you enjoyed most about about watching some of this? You know, I I just I like watching watching those older horses go, and you think back to the horses you watched as a kid show, and I mean like Tapolina is still one of the, my all time favorites. So I could watch her run, and you know, um, it, it's just it's a lot of fun, and to, and to see some of the horses you showed in the past that you don't really remember, but then you see the run, you're like, oh yeah. But so it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting to me, but I I like that old stuff. Well, and it's you know another point that got brought up to me is is like uh, you know it's interesting to see some of the guys like especially the futurity runs who had those horses initially. I mean, some of those horses went on to be great horses, and but but they're always kind of you know associated with maybe somebody else. Uh, Faith in my yeah. cat's a good one. You know, I mean, Clint Allen started him and showed him there. Uh, exactly. But then he went on, you know, with several different riders and, and you know, obviously uh, made a big time horse. But that's been fun to kind of see, you know, who had those horses initially. You know? and, and yeah, and then just to watch some of the old guys that, you know, that we all looked up to when they were showing that's not with us anymore. It's it's pretty cool to watch some of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, seeing, seeing some of that footage, you know, Bill Freeman and, and uh, you know, and some of those guys. But for sure, and even some of the youth, you know, it's been fun to watch watch that too. Yeah, so, that was, that was to see some of those kids that are now horse trainers or talking on you know it's pretty pretty cool to watch it yeah yeah for sure so you are i mean i, I mean a lot of the newer people in the sport they didn't they weren't around when you and i were showing them I and you still show every now and then but uh, you were the 2006 ncha open world champion on on dual ray me um tell us i mean that that horse is just an incredible individual you and candace both had a lot of success on him uh, one over eight hundred and twelve thousand dollars. Tell us a little bit about you know Dure me and and what he's up to now. Yeah, you know, he yes, he was huge for us and in our career. You know, we we were very fortunate to get that horse, and and had a lot of fun showing him and a lot of success. And he's he's still here at the ranch and he hangs out with two old mares and they just have their own pasture together and he just enjoys life. And the weather's bad, he comes in. As long as the weather's good, he stays out. <laughs> What uh, what were some of your favorite things about him? I mean, looking back now, and, and you know, what, what what do you miss most about him? I guess in other horses that you've rode since then. You know that that horse was just you never like you know when we hauled that horse even because we were hauling him when he was still in the age events like we rarely worked that horse like I would maybe work him on the flag one day a week or something but even through the age events you know we'd tip because we both showed him we'd we'd work him before the first go round and then rarely worked him again. You know, and he just, he was such a smart horse. And if he did make a mistake when you showed him, you know, you could, the way you quit a cow or the way you cut a cow, he knew that he had made a mistake and he would fix it. He was just, a, I've never seen another horse that intelligent. He, he was just, just a very, very intelligent animal. Yeah, um, I heard one of the guys mention to her, he, that he's got a saying, he says, I want those horses to listen to me until I make a mistake. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, but he was, he was just the kind of horse, you know, you could cut any kind of cow on him in any pen. It, it didn't, it, nothing bothered him. It didn't matter what the ground was, cows were, it didn't matter. You could just, you knew you had a chance to win every time you walked down there. What, uh, so, so now, I mean, you're more on the sidelines now, obviously busy with, you, you've got a lot of different businesses going. What, what's the horse that maybe stands out to you the, that you kind of think, man, I'd love to go show that horse right now. I mean, if it was any horse that you're, you're watching or that's on the scene right now. Man, you know, I tell you, I don't, if you watched the maturity this year, you'd want to show any of them. I mean, yeah. that was the greatest maturity of all time. So uh, there are so many really, really good horses out there right now that I don't know that I can narrow that down to one. <laughs> It'd be hard to pick. That that'd be that'd be hard to pick. Yeah. So obviously you're the you're the you're the co-owner, you and Candace on Western Bloodstock. Um you guys have got a sale coming up in July during the summer spectacular. Tell us a little bit about uh what people can expect. What's the market doing, you know, and, and uh what what's happening in the sale world? Yeah, you know, I mean well obviously all the sales here in the last couple of months have been cancelled because of all the virus stuff. So we don't really know what the market is, but I, I think once it starts back, I think people will be ready to buy some horses. Um, I think the summer sale, we've, we've got a lot of calls and, and a lot of consignments already. You know, we're going to do a rock and pea production sale. So, I mean, we're going to have some, they're going to sell every yearling they have. Wow. And so, I mean, there's, there's yearlings out of Cinco de Mas, 
Tea Come Hot, Boom Sand Spoon, Boom Sand Baby. I mean, there's some yearlings there by Metallic and Spot and a couple of other outside studs that are out of some of the best mares in the business. So I think that's going to be a pretty impressive lineup of horses. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What, um, what are your consignment deadlines on that sale? Uh, the consignment deadline is June 15th. Right. Okay. We're what? Going uh, sorry. We're going to do Rock and Peas production sale on a Friday night, and then the the regular summer sale on Saturday there at the show. Okay, and that'll be at the end of the show or in the middle or? Twenty uh, fourth and twenty fifth. Twenty fourth, twenty fifth. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, what? Uh, any? You been up to anything else? Anything special? Been catching any Netflix series? Series? Uh, any? Uh, yeah. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a huge TV watcher other than Fox News. That's <laughs> pretty. Candy doesn't she doesn't like it very much because that's all I watch is Fox News 24 seven if I'm in the house. But no, pretty much I'm enjoying the longer days because I like to stay outside. So I don't typically come in till after dark. And you know, I, we've got a lot of cattle, so I enjoy messing with my cattle when we're done with the horses every day. And so I've had I've got to spend a lot of time at the ranch just just peddling around doing doing some things I like to do in the evenings. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, listen, I want to thank you for your time, and 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 I really I want to take this this moment to to thank you personally for everything you do. You know, not just for for us at CHC because you're a big contributor to what we do, and we really appreciate all your support there. Um, but but with NCHA and with these videos, I mean, I can't tell you how many people have you know have, have responded and given us feedback on these videos and how much they've enjoyed them. Um, I'm I'm excited that you're going to be getting more to us. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the time to do what I'm doing now with all this. If we get back to work, somebody else might have to take over the reins. Well, hopefully, NCHA will pick up the reins and you know start sorting through some of those and getting them online. I think it'd be great, like you said, to have them where where people can go watch them online. We've we've been uploading these to YouTube as much as we can, so we've got a YouTube channel playlist where people can go back and watch all these ones. And we've still got a few more years left to to play. Um, but that'll be exciting to get the rest of them too. Yeah, I think you get some of those back in the '80s and early '90s. That's going to be going to be pretty cool to watch. There's pretty outstanding horses that that made a huge impression on our industry. So it'll be it'll be a lot of fun to watch them. Yeah, for sure. I think we can maybe use some of those as uh, some cattle settling fillers during the during the show. <laughs> yeah, that would be handy. <laughs> After we play your commercial, of course. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Well, Jerry, really appreciate your time and uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, good luck with everything out at the ranch and, uh, and we hope to see you pretty soon down here at the summer show. Yes, sir. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. All right. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.